Hi everyone, this is June Blender at Sapien Technologies and today we're going to be talking about breakpoints. In PowerShell Studio 2016, in addition to being able to set traditional line breakpoints, disable and enable them, delete them and create them, you can also set variable breakpoints and function breakpoints. And you can make the variable and function breakpoints conditional. This really changes the way I debug in PowerShell Studio. Let's take a look. So the traditional kind of breakpoint, a line breakpoint, can be set on any line. And typically the way you do it is either to right click, click breakpoint toggle breakpoint, or go into the breakpoint bar and click. That sets a line breakpoint. That means that when I debug, it will stop on the line that has the breakpoint. Let's try it. And there we go. You can set multiple line breakpoints, as many as you need. And when you debug, PowerShell Studio will stop at each line that has a line breakpoint. Next, we'll look at a breakpoint type that's new to PowerShell Studio 2016, a function breakpoint. Here on the Home tab of the ribbon, I'll click Breakpoints, Set Function Breakpoint. I can select any function or any command. Let's start with a function. I've created a little function here called Set Maximum, and I'll select that from the Functions list. It lets me choose a file. So if I'm debugging with multiple files, I can choose from among the files that are available to me. I can also set an action. That lets me to create a conditional breakpoint. We'll get to that soon. Now I've set a breakpoint on the set maximum function. You can't see it here because it's not a line breakpoint. But if you go to breakpoints, edit breakpoints, you can see that there's a function breakpoint set on the set maximum function. When you set a function breakpoint, the breakpoint is set on the function call, not the function definition. It's actually set on the first line in the function that executes. So let's take a peek at that. It actually starts here inside the begin a script block of that breakpoint. Now if I click debug again, it doesn't run through. It actually goes to the process block of that breakpoint and then to the end block. If this function didn't have begin process and end blocks, it would stop just once to satisfy the conditions of the function breakpoint. Let's stop debugging. And I'll show you that I can also set a function breakpoint on a commandlet name. So here I'm calling the get random commandlet. I can use set function breakpoint dialog box, but I'm actually going to go down here to edit breakpoints where I can see all of my breakpoints. And now I'll click this icon to add another function breakpoint. Here I'll set it on get random. Click OK and then click OK here. Now when I run, it should stop on Get Random. Let's see if it works. There we go. It runs whenever I call Get Random in my script. Were I to call it multiple times, it would stop on each instance of the use of the Get Random commandlet. That's a function breakpoint. Now let's look at the third type of breakpoint, the variable breakpoint. I have a variable n in my script, and I want to stop when the value of that variable changes. So let's create a variable breakpoint. Go into breakpoints, and I can choose set variable breakpoint. But again, I'll opt for the edit breakpoints dialog box. I'll select add variable breakpoint. I can select any of my variables. In this case, I'm going to choose n. And this one has a mode dialog that gives me choices of read, write, and read, write. Let me show you the difference. 
Let's select Read and click OK. On this line, I actually read that dollar $n variable. I don't change it, I just use it. That's really different from my use of the variable here in the for each statement because in this case, for each instance of an item in the numbers array, I'll actually change the value of that n variable. That's called writing. So here, where I use it but don't change it, I'm reading the variable. And here, where I change the variable value, I'm writing to it. So what I've done for that breakpoint is set it for read mode. Let's see the effect. I'll click Debug, and you'll notice that it stopped here on line 24 where I read the variable value. But it didn't stop here on line 22 where I change the variable value. Let's reset our breakpoint and see the effect of a right breakpoint. Go to Breakpoints, Edit Breakpoints. I'll change the mode from Read to Write and click OK. Let's click Debug. And this time, because I've set a right breakpoint, it stops where I change the value of n. You can see here in the Variables window that the value of n is 1. And I'll just click Debug. And it stops again when that vari variable value changes again. Here the value is 2 and now the value is 3, and now the value is 4. So when I set a write breakpoint, the breakpoint breaks into the debugger every time the value of that variable is changed. And I can also set it to read-write, which is a combination. That means that my code will break into the debugger any time that a variable is read or changed. Now I'll show you my very favorite breakpoint feature, conditional breakpoints. Up here in the breakpoints menu, I'll select edit breakpoints, add a variable breakpoint, select that n variable, verify that the mode is right, and this time I'm going to replace the default action on a breakpoint, which is to break into the debugger, with my own custom action. If the n variable equals 4, then break. So every time the value of n changes, it comes to this action and executes the action. Now remember, we're replacing that default break into the debugger. So if you don't use the break keyword, the action will not break, although you can do interesting things in an action like logging. So let's try this one. We'll click OK and OK again. And now when I run the debugger, it breaks when the value of n is 4. And it doesn't break before that, although you can see that the code for the other values of n executed. Now, this is a pretty trivial example, but imagine if you had a block of 2,000 servers and one server was causing a particular problem in your code. You would be able to stop right on that server and not have to hit F5 a thousand times to get to the server that you want. You also wouldn't have to write custom code just to isolate that server because you really want to see how it behaves when it's preceded by the other servers in the list. And you can create conditional breakpoints on functions and on commands. So those are the new breakpoint features in PowerShell Studio 2016. Line breakpoints, function breakpoints, command breakpoints, variable breakpoints, and conditional breakpoints. I hope they help you. Thanks for listening.